Manga Wido. Hey, Yuto! Over here! Sorry I'm late! My name's Yuto. I'm just your average salary man. Glad you could make it! Is that everyone? This is the only time I'm coming with this many people here. It's not like I want to be here myself. But I couldn't refuse when Senpai said he invited some nice girls especially. Are you guys having a secret chat? Suspicious. No, we were just saying how nervous we are because of the girls are so beautiful. <laughs> were you really? Are these two used to this? Today, my friend Kensuke from back in college asked me for the favor of a lifetime. So here I am participating in a blind dating party. The event's kicking off with four guys and four girls, making eight of us in total. Kensuke's senpai at work, Kanda, was the one who arranged it. Apparently he was quite the womanizer, and he was always making Kensuke come along to dating events. Seems like when your boss is a nuisance, your private life gets harder too. Have a hand towel. Uh, thanks. Not at all. Here's the salad. Cute and excellent taste. The girls took the initiative as they divided the food and complimented each other on their appearances. Their ulterior motives were immediately plain to see, and I was already getting fed up. Well then, shall we kick things off with some self-introductions? Ooh, yes, yes, me first. I'm Akane. I'm a photo star grammar. And my job is to go adventuring around the world. Oh, and my daddy's the CEO of a major candy manufacturing company. Golly gosh, a CEO's daughter? <laughs> you bet in like my granddad. <laughs> okay, okay. Me? My name's Sayako. I'm a photo star grammar too, just like Akane. Oh, and by the way, my daddy's the CEO of a jewelry company. Holy moly! You're both photostagrammers? Now that's hip! After that, both of their self-introductions, without fail, included the sentence, my daddy's the CEO of so-and-so. That's right, apparently both girls were the daughters of the CEOs of major companies. Is this what Kensuke meant earlier when he mentioned some nice girls? Time for the self-introductions from the boys camp now. Let's hear them. Okay, I'll go. I'm Kanda the host of tonight's blind dating event. I'm a surgeon. Wow, that's super cool. A surgeon? Amazing. Predictably, as soon as Kanda mentioned his occupation, the curls went wild. The surgeon's salary is high even for a medical professional. A second look at his appearance revealed a vibrant brand name suit and a shiny expensive looking watch. Guess this is what you'd expect from a surgeon. Then came an entrepreneur. And after Kensuke and the surgeon finished their self-introductions in order, it was finally my turn. Hey, uh, I'm here tonight because my friend Kensuke invited me. It seemed like there were some excessively high expectations placed on me due to the order things had gone down. The girls were looking at me with a glimmer in their eyes. The pair of photostagrammers right in front of me, in particular, were gazing at me as if to appraise my value. My job is... I just work in IT. Wow, you're the president of an IT company? No, it's nothing like that. I'm just a regular employee. As soon as I said the words regular employee, there was an obvious change in the atmosphere. <sighs> so, you're an office worker? Hey, what's that watch you're wearing? Is it nice? No, it's just a cheap one I bought for work. Huh, and your suit? Is it unbranded? Well, yeah, it is. I'd been invited to this event out of the blue just earlier today, and I didn't have any time to prepare in advance, so I was wearing my regular clothes. But this is just how things are for a salary man. Hey, hey, so that about wraps things up for the self-introductions. Cheers, everyone! In the midst of the uncomfortable atmosphere, Kanda raised a toast to bring things back on track. The speed dating event continued while everyone changed sheets occasionally. About halfway through, we somehow or other ended up divided into two groups, and things calmed down a little. Kanda and the entrepreneur carried on their respective conversations and seemed to be having fun. Me, Kensuke, and the two photostagrammer girls had been left out and were all sat together. As for the girls, they both had a look of complete disappointment on their faces. Compared to the table next to us, to be honest, the atmosphere was pretty awkward. She's just taking absurd amounts of photos in silence. We're gonna head to the toilets. 
Psst, come with me. Sure. Gah, this is too awkward. Yeah, their attitudes are completely different to when we started. Listen, speaking frankly, I don't think either of us really intended to get a girlfriend today. But if things are too awkward, Kanda will probably say something to us afterwards. So even if it's just for show, we have to try and liven things up a bit. You help me? Um, uh, okay. I'll do my best. Sorry for dragging into this. We prepared ourselves and sat back down at the table where our corrumpy counterparts were waiting for us. Sorry we kept you. Yeah, welcome back. Excuse me, can I have another wine, please? When we got back to our seats, the two of them had been drinking pretty heavily. A row of empty glasses were lined up on the table. So, what kind of pictures do you guys upload to Photostar? Hmm? Me and Akane are both in the travel field. Ah, you mean like going abroad? Yeah, that sort of thing. You must have gone to all sorts of different places then. Well, the people doing it seriously do. We're half hobbyists, so we're not as committed as them. That's right. We always get our pocket money from our daddies anyway. It's not like we're doing Photostar because we need the money or anything. I see. I wonder how many thousands or tens of thousands of dollars the daughters of a CEO means when she says pocket money. In any case, with the swift introduction of the word daddy into the conversation, I could feel the difference in the social standing between our families. It is fun going abroad, though. Oh, I just love it. Right? Japan's just so boring. You just can't live without getting some steam off abroad every now and then. That's so true. Whoa! I guess that's what you'd expect from the daughters of CEOs. <laughs> I don't know if it was because they had a lot to drink, but the girls were getting louder and louder as they got more excited. So, which countries have you two been to recently? I've been stuck in a rut lately, so I could use some inspiration. Well, it's not really recent, but I did go to Guam a few years ago. I think that's about it. No way! You serious? A few years ago? He's gotta be joking. Wait, you can't afford to go abroad, can you? <laughs> Girls were pointing and laughing at me. Looking on, Kensuke seemed even angrier than I was. Is that how you speak to people? That's just how it is for people like me and him who work normal jobs. You don't always have time to travel when you're busy with work as we are. Really? Oh, well, aren't you good little employees? <laughs> Corporate slaves. <laughs> you listen to me. Now, now. I couldn't tell if the girls had malicious intentions or not, but they continued chatting in high spirits, completely indifferent to the seething Kensuke. Japanese people seriously love working, huh? Daddy arranged me an introduction for a temporary job at a smaller company so I could get some work experience, but I quit after two days. Ugh, nuh uh. I'm just not cut out for that life. I bet it was nothing but work from morning till night, right? You'd have to be a moron to do that kind of thing for less than 100,000 K a year. Huh. They were being a little unpleasant, but it beat them sulking, so I just decided to half-heartedly nod along as they spoke. At some point, the conversation returned back to Photostar and traveling abroad. Guess what? My post went viral. I'm getting so many comments. Ooh, this water cottage is so pretty. I know, right? But have you seen how many poor people are commenting on it? <laughs> I laugh so hard reading them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> One of them said, I want to save up my money so I can go on an amazing holiday like this. <laughs> what kind of penniless slum dweller can even afford to go on a little holiday? It's so pathetic. <laughs> Nearly all of our followers are poverty-ridden scum, huh? <laughs> they probably don't even have enough money or time, so all they can do is grit their teeth and look at the pictures. <laughs> oh, it's just too hilarious. <laughs> they clapped their hands and laughed hysterically. Kensuke had gotten tired of their condescending remarks a while ago, but now even I, who had been tolerating them until now, ran out of patience when they started making fun of their followers. Despite both of you being photostagrammers, don't you think your followers are important? Duh, of course follower numbers are important. As a photostagrammer, the number of followers and likes you have is your value. They're kind of like, grades? What do we care if most of them are poor scum? A like is a like. Don't you think your fans would be shocked if they heard you referring to them as poor scum like this? 
Huh? Shocked? Who cares what they think? I mean, of course, we don't want to get internet pitchfork mobbed, but as long as we take nice pictures and get likes, what's the problem? Right? It appeared that it was time for these two girls, who knew nothing of the world, to be taught a lesson. So, that's what you think while doing your jobs, is it? I see. Hey, what's with you all of a sudden? Ugh, no way. Hearing the words poor scum didn't upset you, did it? <laughs> we can't help it. It's the truth. Damn it! I'm just gonna tell him. You know what company he works for? <laughs> Probably some measly small fry company at best, right? Not that I care. You know Photostar? The site you wouldn't stop talking about just now? Well, he works for the company that runs it. He's on the inside. <laughs> we kept it a quiet on purpose because you said you were photosagrammers at the beginning. W well, so what? He's probably just some insignificant low-grade employee. <laughs> Don't be stupid. He's really good at his job. Can someone on over 100k a year really be referred to as poor scum? Like you were saying just now? Huh? I have no obligation to tell you anything about my job. But one word from me could easily make one or two run-of-the-mill cliched accounts like yours vanish into obscurity. Uh, you're joking, right? They weren't being so cocky anymore. It might not trouble them financially, being the daughters of CEOs, but Photostar was still important to them. I'm sorry. I won't say poor scum anymore. I'll be careful about what I say. Please, don't make our accounts disappear. Please! Oh, yeah. I'll have to have a word with your sponsors, too. I said what I said just now too lightly. This could ruin the image of some important business partners. I'm sorry! Please! Anything but that! I'll be careful from now on! I don't care whether you call me poor scum or about anything you say to me, but bad-mouthing your followers who are important and who like pictures of your experiences because they admire you makes you a failure as a professional photostagrammer. I'm gonna think about how to deal with you. I suggest you think about your behavior. We're so sorry. Kanda, noticing the unusual atmosphere at our table, quickly brought the event to an end. Sorry. Will Kanda say something to you tomorrow? It's fine. Don't worry. He'll understand when I explain what happened. Besides, they were really annoying me. So I'm pleased you said something. Really? Whew. I said I'd think about how to deal with them, but of course that was a lie. There's no way I could go investigating people based on my personal affairs. I just wanted to make them sweat a little. If this makes them think about their behavior even a little, I'll be happy. But that's not how things turned out. The next day, their accounts went up in flames at the hands of an internet pitchfork mob. The cause? A single video. The video, titled Influencer Calls Followers Poor Scum, which had been recorded by a customer at the restaurant, went viral in the blink of an eye. Popular Photostar Grammar makes series of problematic statements. I used to like her. What a shock. The two, upon investigation, appear to be the daughters of the CEOs of major companies. It's over for those fools. <laughs> the internet exploded in a storm of fierce criticism. Before long, both of their accounts disappeared. Apparently, they were doxxed, with online sleuths exposing their real names and addresses, and they even started getting harassed at home. Of course, they were dropped by all the sponsors who had contracts with them, and I heard they're even being sued for damages. Their dad's company's stocks plummeted. I didn't even have to do anything. Things got out of hand on their own, and then were gradually forgotten about. The internet really is terrifying. Well, in their case, it was completely their own fault. But I'm going to be careful about what I say online from now on. <laughs>